Good afternoon and welcome to Robit's second quarter and uh, half-year report analyst and press conference. My name is Arto Halonen. I'm the CEO of the company and I'm here with Ville Peltonen, our CFO. First, please note the disclaimer on the forward-looking statements. In the second quarter of the year, we saw sequential improvement to the first quarter of the year, but uh, we fell behind our targets. Orders received declined by 14.2%, reaching 22.8 million euros. Net sales improved from quarter one by 11.4%, but uh, decreased by 21.4% to a uh, very strong comparison quarter. Uh, the decline in constant currency was 17.6%. Uh, During the quarter, we saw weaker demand in the construction segment, especially in uh, Asia and Europe markets. In the mining, mining segment, the market demand remained uh, stable, uh, but we were not able to compensate the loss of the sales from the Russian market. Our comparable EBTA reached 6% of uh, net sales and was 1.1%. 5%. Also there, the uh, comparison quarter was uh, very strong uh, from last year. Uh, we are progressing with our cost savings program, where we are targeting uh, 5 million euro cost savings to the 2022 uh, baseline, uh, out of which 2% to 3% uh, we target to uh, have impact and materialize during this year. In this program, we are focusing on fixed cost savings, savings from the sourcing actions, as well as the footprint on, on the factory and supply side. And as a part of these uh, actions, when it comes to the uh, factory footprint, we have decided to close manufacturing in our Perth, Australia uh, manufacturing unit and move the production from that factory to other Robit uh, supply hubs in the world. We, we estimate that this uh, closure is finalized uh, end of quarter three, beginning of quarter one. Also our cash flow from operating activities improved, reaching uh, 3.4 uh, million euros. Uh, And it was driven by the reduction in the networking capital, where we continue to implement actions on that front to, to continue on the similar path. If you look at the first half numbers, the net sales decreased by 19.2%, in constant currency 16.8%. We saw declined in all of the businesses. In Top Hammer, geotechnical uh, decline from the east area uh, was, was the main driver. In Top Hammer, also the decline as a result of the lower market activity in Asia impacted the top line. In Down the Hole, uh, the, the decline was more driven uh, by Americas and, and Australia. The comparable EBTA from uh, first half reached 3.3%. Uh, the profitability was impacted, especially by the low utilization rate in our down the hole production, uh, hence also the kind of the decision on the footprint. Uh, also, we still saw increase in the raw material costs, which we were partially able to compensate uh, with the uh, uh, price increases. And also we had currency headwinds during the first half of the year, as well as on the second quarter. On the ESG side, uh, many of our uh, KPIs and targets moved the right direction, um, especially pleased on the systematic work that has been done to improve the uh, safety, health and safety in, in Robit, and we saw positive positive development on that front.
EMEA continues to be our largest region. The development within the uh, EMEA area was uh, was mixed. We saw some positive development, especially in the northern Europe, due to uh, winning some new customers uh, earlier this this year. On the other hand, um, uh, we had a we had a bigger reorganization in the in the Southern Africa organization and that impacted the business development activities uh, uh, in that that region during the quarter but uh, now we have a very very good and strong team in place there and uh, we are we are geared up for continuing to deliver growth from the region Americas uh, net sales dropped by 20.5 percent during the first half of the year uh, the, the development of well, let's say the new sales opportunities uh, uh, progressed slower than anticipated also there are some with some larger key customers we saw uh, lower consumption of, of our products due to for example strike uh, or or then um, uh, kind of operational related issues and that impacted our sales in the in the region as well as uh, that some of the let's say uh, larger distributors in in that area still still were um, reducing their inventory levels during the during the first half of the year impacting then also our net sales in Asia the sales uh, declined by 27 percent and uh, and uh, as mentioned already the market activity in that area uh, was lower Asia region for us is is uh, let's say more heavily focused on on uh, construction segment compared to uh, our other market areas and and uh, that uh, had a bigger impact in that area in Australasia, the development was relatively flat. Uh, Top Hammer continued to develop well in the Australasia region, but uh, in the down the whole segment, uh, we didn't perform as well. We progressed uh, with systematic actions on the ESG front. Uh, uh, we, uh, as I said, we in the safety side, we, we continue to to implement, let's say, stronger safety culture into the organization. Uh, we continue to shift the focus of the safety work to more proactive proactive work rather than reactive work. And, uh, and we saw some improvement on the LTIF. Oh, obviously, still the rate is too high and the work continues on that front, but already now some positive development. Also, uh, in this uh, training hours on the consultative sales, one of our key KPIs and, and let's say enabler of, of future growth as well and and, uh, and uh, let's say sustainable use of our products on that front, we, we recorded good number of um, uh, training hours. The CO2 emission intensity uh, is 10 or 11 percent below our baseline of 20 uh, 20, but um, still the result is, is uh, not as good as it was in the in the comparison period of first half of 2022 although our emissions reduced in absolute terms in relative terms um, they they increased compared to the first half of 2022 I'll hand over to Ville for more details on financials thank you Arto so just to recap the key financials, the net sales declined in the second quarter by 21.4% from the strong comparison period and declined by 17.6% in constant currencies. So we got some negative impact from currencies as well. Uh, the adjusted EBTA declined to 6%. And, and also there's the uh, negative impact from, from currencies. In, in the second quarter, it was like somewhere around 0 0.4 million euros. EBIT percentage in the second quarter declined to 0.2%, and the result for the period was minus 
per uh, million euros. We continued uh, the positive development in the networking capital due to our fit for service program that we're, we are running and the networking capital totaled at 43.2 million euros. So a significant decrease from, from the comparison period, but still not at the level that we are aiming at. Inventories decreased to 42.8%, receivables to 21.3 uh, million euros, sorry, and payables decreased to 20. 0.1 million euros. Networking capital percentage of the sales from the last 12 months was 43%, declined 3% from, from the uh, comparison period. And the positive development in the networking capital resulted in, in a positive development of the uh, Operating uh, cash flow and the cash flow before changes in networking capital was 1 million euros and the operating net cash flow at 3.4 million euros. Cash flow from investing activities was 0 0.1 million euros and from financing activities minus 0 0.2 million euros. So the net increase in the second quarter was 3.2 million euros. And the increase uh, left us with 8.6 million in cash and cash equivalents at the end of the second quarter. And our total interest bearing loans and utilized credit limits were 35.2 million euros and continued to decrease from the comparison period. This includes 6.2 million from the IFRS 6 lease liabilities. Capital structure, so net debt continued also to decrease and was at 26.5 million euros and the 12 month trailing net debt EBITDA ratio was at 5.1. Equity ratio remained solid at 45%. Our loans from financial institutions at the end of the first half of the year totaled at 29 million euros. We extended our financing agreement at the end of the May to a new three-year period. Our loan amortization schedule is 1.5 biannually uh, payments at December at, at the end of end of June next year. And now we have the uh, interest rate swap that came into the took effect at the end of June and ends at the end of. 26, end of June 26, and that leaves us with the average interest rate of 4.3%. Back to you, Art. Thank you, Phil. So focus for second half of the year. Uh, we continue to strengthen our distributor network in the high market potential areas. Uh, focus will be, for example, in, in some of the African countries as well as in North America, uh, where we are identifying and, uh, and introducing new distributors. Also strong ramp up support for recently appointed distributors. During the quarter, we, for example, announced our cooperation with a uh, Brazilian company called Sotrek uh, that will be uh, will be representing representing Robit in a, let's say very high market potential uh, area and we are very excited about that cooperation and and will work work in close cooperation with them 
also will put high focus naturally on scaling up and, and uh, further increasing our sales activity in all regions. Networking capital, cash management, that's a second focus areas. Uh, we continue the implementation of fit for service program and we have very uh, specific target setting, very specific actions, especially for inventory reduction for the second half of, of the year to bring the networking capital to the levels that we target. We continue to implement the cost saving programs where we are targeting this 5 million uh, euro saving from the 2022 baseline and one key action in that saving programs will be winding down the manufacturing in Perth, Australia uh, during the second half of the year. Our financial targets, long-term financial targets remain intact, 15% annual growth and comparable EBTA 13%. Uh, and uh, in, in June, we updated our guidance for the year and we expect our net sales to be between 90 to 100 million euros and comparable EBTA between three to six million euros. Thank you, and uh, now we are ready for some questions. Erk. All right, yes, it's uh, Erk from Interest. A couple of questions from me. First, regarding this savings program of this 5 million total, how much of that will be EBIT impacting? You could say that uh, majority, vast majority of that is, is EBIT impacting. No more, 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 more. Over ninety percent. Over ninety. Okay. Yes. Great. And this five million should be visible fully in the twenty-five. Uh, I th well, we are targeting to complete the actions on that by the end of this year, and uh, and uh, let's say you should see majority of that during twenty-four. Okay, and then. Uh, regarding this program, how much of that, if any, was visible over in the first half of this year? Well, we saw some improvement uh, from that already first half of the year. If we estimated the impact for this year to be uh, two to three million euros, it, it was, let's say, a smaller, smaller part of that estimated impact that we saw now first half of the, of the year. It will be more more realizing in the second half of the year. Okay, and then regarding your guidance, it seems that you aim at the second half sales of between 44, 54 million euros, but that's okay, but then the EBTA margin would be pretty broad scale from three to 8%. Uh, what is there in, in your profitability that you still don't, can't foresee more accurately? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, well, there's always uncertainties. And as, as you know, we work with, for example, very short backlog. Backlog is, is kind of non-existent. We don't necessarily have that business at hand that um, that we uh, we are going to, let's say, deliver during the second, second half of the year. And uh, still, during the last quarter, we, we saw uh, kind of the realized raw material cost for us increasing and uh, and uh, the trend starts to turn down uh, as based on today's facts that we have have at hand but it still it's uh, the impact will come gradually uh, from that aspect but um, there's there's always some uh, uncertainties especially given that we are we are very uh, we're working with very short backlog periods Okay, then before I let others make the questions, uh, which could you describe in, in the first half or second quarter sales? What were the price and volume impacts in, in this sales decline? I mean, what is uh, how much difference is your pricing vis a vis the situation a year ago? If you look uh, quarter two, 
to quarter two impact. Uh, there is positive impact from the uh, pricing, uh, but it is not a kind of a major impact from the price side because we we did maybe maybe you recall that we did very early kind of pricing actions last year second quarter of, of last year and and we actually saw a quite good impact already uh, in the comparison period there is positive from uh, from pricing uh, but we are we are not talking about any more kind of in in big percentages is it say single digit or in that ballpark? yeah that that ballpark you could say yeah okay. Yeah, maybe I can continue on the last one SCB. Just a question on the wind down in Australia. First of all, could you give any more color on what are your plans, plans there regarding the assets that you have in place? What, what are the balance sheet values of those assets and what are your kind of uh, forward plans for those and what type of a balance sheet impacts would we expect to see? Uh, yeah, the, let's say the balance sheet values from Australia are, are relatively low if you compare to our our total balance sheet uh, given that the uh, machinery is, is it's not old but it's not new either uh, so the the kind of the impacts on the balance sheet are we are talking about less than 1 million euros but then uh, most of the assets we are uh, we are going to then uh, divest i think they as we we continue to still manufacture there during the third quarter the divestments will will likely take place then then only in uh, in in quarter four and um, uh, we we expect to to also uh, that to result some some positive cash for the company some of the assets we might use in the other factories but that will be smaller part of the let's say the total machinery we have in australia and, and the goodwill that you have from, from the Australian business world. That, that has no, uh, no yeah. impact on, on this. Yeah, the goodwill was uh, commoditized in 2018. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then, second question is on the, on the cash flow and, and the working capital going into the second half. I mean, we know, probably know what your EBITDA is going to be, but how should we think about then the cash generation or the kind of Will the positive trend continue, or are you now kind of uh, flattening out? Or? Well, as mentioned, I think, uh, well, fact is that uh, today, you know, we have more inventory than, than uh, we want, or what we need to kind of, uh, in optimal situation, run the business. So definitely our target is to free cash uh, during the second half of, half of the year, especially from the inventory in the other networking capital uh, items i think we'll see smaller impacts but but we have a potential to to let's say generate cash from the inventory reduction okay. and then kind of uh, the downgrade on this year's EBITDA. Uh, what what type of impacts does it have on your cost of debt or covenants or things like that uh, well, we had a waiver agreed for our our covenant uh, with our financing bank, and uh, and obviously it's it's a thing that needs to be closely managed and, and monitored. Uh, but as of now, let's say the impact that it has was uh, reflected in the in the let's say average interest rate that Ville Ville mentioned. And then then on, on the growth side, if you, if you look at the business that goes to mining industry and let's exclude the Russia from, from that sure. kind of impacts. What did you see kind of on growth terms on, on, on the first half? Did you see some of your clients destocking inventories? Did you grow in the mining business? How, how did it trend? Yeah, we, we had some kind of individual key customers that are, you know, in our scales very relevant. We saw lower consumption from some key customers. And, and you know, there is seasonality there might be, you know, destocking happening. There's different reasons between between the customers. But if you think broad broadly, mining sector, the market demand is not a kind of a constraint for us. Obviously, our market share is uh, is relatively low. So definitely, we have room to grow uh, a lot in that segment. 
But now first half of the year with some of our large customers, we saw a decline either through the excess inventory that our distributor might have had or even the end customer and some in some cases lower consumption of some of our key customers. And at the same time, we need to be kind of aware that we didn't have enough new customers that we would have won, let's say, end of last year to compensate for that kind of fluctuations. And, and that's that's kind of the number one focus, obviously, for now is, is to get the uh, sales final conversion version happening and, and uh, building that future growth. But if you go back one year, and again, let's exclude Russia from that, would you say that your customer base in mining is today wider? So when we see this kind of an impact ending and the market returns yeah. to growth, then... If you look kind of big picture, one year back, we, we have won some customers, maybe we've lost some customers. The net impact in uh, is pretty much plus minus, you know, and then we talk about some some smaller smaller changes. And definitely kind of where we aim to be is, is heavily on the plus side. And, and uh, now first half of the year, we were not there and, and then given the economic development, some customer specific development, uh, therefore we saw decline in the sales. And then on the construction side, is it fair to assume that it's still trending down? Are you still kind of working on a project that, that have been already initiated and I guess kind of the new business is, is the top one right now? Yeah, I think typically the projects we work, they, they kind of, they with exception of some very large ones, they, they are not necessarily lasting that long so we we need to kind of to turn the project funnel all the time there are projects some of them gets delayed the decision making and there are less projects and that obviously impacts also in that that the competitive situation in some of these projects is is tougher uh, than it was let's say one year ago or one and a half half years years ago as the total market uh, is today smaller but I, I would say kind of that it is definitely lower than when we look one year back uh, and uh, we'll see how, how long that lasts in that, that second. Okay, then the final one for me, just, just a clarification, you have the 5 million cost savings that you're targeting and on top of that the impact from Australia wind down or is it included? Included. Included, okay. Included. Thank you. Yes, it's uh, from Indra's again. Uh, could you provide us with ballpark figures? How much of that was minus 21% sales decline? How much of that was linked to construction? How much to, to mining? Uh, yeah, we, we don't kind of uh, report or, or uh, on the segment basis, uh, but it was kind of just a ballpark, I think, uh, in percentage terms. Mining is a sl slightly larger business for us. In uh, in percentage term, in those segments, it was bigger uh, in the construction segment, but we, we saw kind of also decline in the mining. But that was more related to these, let's say, these talking customer specific issues rather than, rather than necessarily the market demand as such. And then coming back to your construction customers, did you lose any meaningful uh, customers on the construction side or was it just a matter of their volume declining per se? Yeah, you have in the construction side, you know, if you think a quarry, it's more continuous business, it's maybe more, more uh, related to mining as such. There in that segment is more related just to the production volumes. But then other part of the construction business is project related. And that then relates that, okay, there were less projects available uh, in the market. And, and I think we, we got our share of the projects, uh, but uh, uh, that the overall market was just uh, uh, lower.
Any other? Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, still one owing to this Perth factory closed on. Is there a risk that you will lose local customers there due to this closure? Well, that's our number one focus is, is to ensure smooth transition and, and that uh, we delivery capability stays at all time. Uh, part of that is that uh, is that we we are going to temporary increase inventory levels uh, for the products uh, in question uh, before the close time. That's one way way of managing it. That but we are also kind of well advanced in in setting up the new supply. So that's a risk that is being managed. But you have heard or seen no indication by your customer, local customers that okay, we are not anymore friends with you as you are exiting Australia. No. No. Any other questions? All right. If not, we'll uh, thank you for your time and uh, we will be reporting then our quarter three results in October 24. Thank you. Thank you.